Welcome to Sanford Flip Math, the home edition. Uh, we're working in AP Calculus, uh, the Larson Bataglia book, uh, section 4.1, the first installment. Uh, this loosely uh, corresponds to the Finney Demana Waits Kennedy uh, book in 4.2 and 5.3, uh, not the same organization. So we are starting a very new topic. Uh, we are starting to shift our focus uh, from derivative uh, to uh, anti-derivative. Uh, this was mentioned briefly in other chapters, but, but really not a uh, big focus. Uh, while I'm here, I just want to pop in a little bit of information. Most people consider Newton to be the father of calculus, uh, the inventor of calculus. And while that's true, he is not the only inventor of calculus. It turns out that Leibniz, a uh, German uh, philosopher and uh, mathematician uh, had a huge role in inventing calculus also. What's really crazy to me is they were both working in the same organization. They were both uh, working on different sides of the idea. Uh, many would say that Newton was working on the, the uh, in integral side of calculus, which we're starting to in, uh, work into now, whereas Leibniz was working on the uh, differential, the derivative side of calculus. I will say also that from what I've read, uh, my understanding is Newton worked on things from a very geometric, visual kind of uh, approach, whereas Leibniz worked on it from a much more analytical or symbolic approach. And Leibniz apparently is credited with uh, developing much of the, the notation that we use even today, or at least some version uh, that's pretty close. So anyway, just interesting stuff to me. Uh, they were both working on the same ideas or the opposite sides of the same ideas uh, and, and didn't even know it. Uh, probably Leibniz was working on things earlier, but Newton was the, the more recognizable name at the time. So he, of course, got all the credit. So you can look up information about Newton and Leibniz more as you wish, uh, but uh, that is our history list lesson for the day. Uh, Leibniz is spelled like this, uh, E-I-N-I-Z, uh, uh, and uh, easy enough to, to Google who came up with uh, all this stuff. So anyway, cool stuff. Uh, so integration uh, gets used to find uh, areas and volumes mostly. And uh, basically what it comes down to is antiderivative which will actually make one word and I'm spelling it wrong while I'm trying to talk and write at the same time, antiderivative. Uh, so undoing the derivative. Um, there's like a million little notations that go with this. Uh, it is very uh, common for people to think of uh, the original function as the capital F and then the, the derivative as the lowercase. So the derivative of the original is the lowercase. So the derivative of the capital is the lowercase. And then we can use this cute little S notation. It's like an S that somebody grabbed the ends of it and, and pulled. Um, so this means uh, integral, which we will talk about context more later. And there's a reason that this looks like an S. Um, and so we'll talk about this more, but uh, we will down the road find situations where there will be a number on the top and bottom of this that will be called a definite integral. Uh, so this is called an indefinite integral uh, because there are no numbers here. So the integral of f of x is capital F, okay? Uh, so we'll see things like the integral of x squared dx is how this is gonna look. And what you do is you undo the derivative. So you start thinking of Okay, what did I take the derivative? Well, if it if it is a squared now, then the derivative must have been of a of a cubic. But when I multiply by that three, there's no three here, so it must have canceled out. So this is the idea. Uh, so you're reversing. This is reversing the power rule, and you add one to the exponent, divide by the new exponent. We'll look at that more specifically. I know it feels like I'm going fast right now. And then the other catch is is that there could have been a number out here. We don't know what number, could have been plus three, plus five, plus seven. Uh, and when we took the derivative, it just disappeared because the derivative of a constant is zero. So, so this is the idea of where we're going with this. Um, it is also uh, 
talked about, we talk about differential equations. Differential equations are just equations that have differentials in them. An equation that has a derivative in it. So for instance, it could be something like dy dx equals x squared. And then sometimes what you'll be asked to do is find the solution of that differential equation or the solutions potentially. And what that involves is getting rid of the d's. The solution is the equation without the derivative in it. So what we do is we separate variables. We multiply both sides by the dx and dy equals x squared dx. And then we bring this s shaped thing in the antiderivative. And so we're gonna do that on both sides. Now worth noting that this is part of that derivative notation. And again, uh, you know, the way this book is set up, this is how we start out. Uh, but we will talk about why this is here as part of this notation in a couple sections, okay? So the antiderivative of dy, what did we take the derivative of to get one with respect to y is really just y. And then we just did this a hot second ago, right? So this would be x cubed over three plus c, okay? So and the S is a symbol for antiderivative, okay? And then once you do the antiderivative, we typically add on a plus C because there could have been a constant, another number there that we took the derivative of. Sometimes we'll be able to find that number, sometimes we won't, okay? Differential equation is an equation with derivatives in it. This is not the only way it could look, but that's, that's a, a good example to start us with. And then to solve it, you separate the variables. You get all the Y stuff on one side, all the X stuff on the other, and then do the integral, the antiderivative of both sides. So that's what we did here, okay? So anyway, that's, that's the mega intro. Okay, so what's the meat and potatoes? What's, oh, sorry, I didn't mean to offend my vegetarians. Um, what, is the, what is the potatoes of it? What is the, the main gist, the mathy stuff? So what we're going to do is do some examples of finding the integral, finding the indefinite integral, because there, again, there are no numbers here. Okay, so people will just say, find the integral. You don't have to say indefinite every time. So the question is, what did we take derivative of to get this? Well, this is a horrible way to start out um, because you can't just do antiderivative of the bottom and, and top separate, just like you can't do derivative of the top and bottom separately. That's just not a thing. Okay, so we're gonna rewrite this. Now, the way I'm gonna rewrite this is one fourth x to the negative two. It's still doing the integral, still dx. And again, the thing that you're really looking at is this part. And I will tell you the thing you're really, really looking at is this part, okay? So again, that issue of uh, what did I do? This is, this is a, an X, uh, a variable to a power. So this is a power rule situation. And remember that when we took derivatives, right? If we started with ax to the n and we took the derivative, then y prime is a n x to the n minus one. Well, so to go backwards, I need to add one back to that exponent and I need to un unmultiply by that old exponent. Okay, so that sounds crazy, right? So, so let's, let's write it like this and I'm going to undo the derivative. I'm going to do the integral of x to the n. So to undo it, again, I would add one to the exponent and I would unmultiply by that exponent. So I'm going to, in other words, divide by that exponent. But remember that it's, it's supposed to be the exponent before we did derivative. So this is the exponent before we did derivative because I'm undoing it. So I'm gonna divide by the new exponent. Okay, so let me, let me do this. Okay, so this is from your book. Uh, this is in section 4.1. Uh, it's also uh, in, in the Finney de Waits Kennedy book as well. And it is in your book on page, sorry, I don't have the page number right here. Ah! Here it is, uh, 282. So page 282 in your book. And the rule that we just talked about 
So here, here's, so on, on the left side, we have derivative formulas or differentiation formulas. And on the right side, we have the corresponding undo the derivative. In other words, integral integration formulas. So here, here's the formula we just saw. They don't put an A in front, but it's the same formula. Multiply by the exponent and then subtract one from the exponent. So here is, here is the new and improved, the going backwards formula. So we add one to the exponent, we divide by the new exponent. I will tell you that if you remember the left column really well, he 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 he, then the right column is less of a thing, right? So all, all it is is, you know, so what the, the derivative was, so like I'm looking at tangent and secant squared here. So the antiderivative of secant squared is tangent. Here it is, the antiderivative of secant squared, yes, because that's part of the notation, is tangent plus c, because that's part of the process, right? And again, that plus c is, we could have had a number added on. So they're just kind of hammering that point home here, okay? So if you have something that has a negative cosecant cotangent in it, and then the antiderivative would be cosecant. Well, here they thought, well, it's more likely that you won't see the negative here. So they undo that negative by putting it over here, okay? So this is, these are the rules. These are posted. And if we're in, in person, I may be passing these out, but these are for sure posted, okay? Alrighty, so let us keep rolling. Uh, share. Okay, so all that to say is I'm going to add one to the exponent and divide by the new exponent. The one fourth is just going to come along, just like when we do derivatives. You can bring the if you have a number, not a variable, a number multiplying. You can bring it along. In some, in fact, there is a property. Uh, that was on that page I just showed you that says if there's a constant on the inside, you can literally bring it out. And so you could ignore it if you want. You don't need to write it like that, but that lets us focus just on this one thing. Okay, so here comes the one fourth. I'm gonna add one to the exponent. So this is now X to the negative one. I'm gonna divide by the new exponent and that part's done. Plus we could have had a constant. Done. Now. We could clean this up, right? So uh, maybe we would write one over four X, it is negative plus C. Okay, that's done also, okay? And obviously we did the antiderivative, the integral, so that little S thing is gone. Now, and again, one of the properties, just like properties for uh, derivatives, you can do the derivative of separate terms separately. Well, that's true for antiderivative as well. I'm not gonna write that, but okay, I'll, I guess I'll kind of write it. So you could think of this as separate integrals. Now, if you split this up as separate integrals, then you need a dx for every one. You don't need to write like this. I'm just saying that this is how we're gonna think about it. So I'm going to look at this and I'm gonna do what I just did. This is again, these are all powers. These are all power functions. These terms are uh, this, can't say polynomial because three halves is not an integer, but I'm gonna add one. So that's X to the five halves. I know some people just went, ah, divide by the new exponent plus two, add one to the exponent, divide by the new exponent plus one. Well, the exponent right now, this is like X to the zero. So I'm gonna call that X to the one, divide by the new exponent. Obviously I don't need to write divided by one plus C. So this is fabulous. Okay, it's ugly, but it's fabulous. Uh, if I wanna clean this up, uh, multiply by the reciprocal. So this becomes two X to the five halves over five. Two over two is gone. One, yeah, whatever, uh, plus X plus C. All right, there we go. Okay, 20, these are all uh, problems from the Larson book. I'm just going to call it the Larson book because that's the first name, the first last name. <laughs> uh, again, we can do integral of these two separately. So you need to be thinking, what did we take the derivative of? Well, the derivative of sine is cosine. So this must be five sine. Again, these are in that list that we just saw. Okay. Uh, the derivative of Cosine is negative sine. Well, there's no negative here. So I'm gonna to have to think of it, it must have been a negative cosine that we took the derivative of because the derivative of cosine would be negative and then the negative of the negative. So this is gonna be four 
negative cosine plus C. Uh, the parentheses need to be here if you're gonna write the negative here. Now, if you're thinking ahead and you put the minus in front of that four, then you're a rock star. But if you're gonna write it after, then you need the parentheses so it doesn't look like four minus cosine. So I'm gonna rewrite this even though it is clearly not necessary. Thanks for having me. All right, and then the same kind of thing, uh, this is number 30. And so again, antiderivative of cosine, in other words, what did we take the derivative of? Well, it must have been sine. Now this one will be interesting. Remember the derivative of three to the X would be three to the X times the natural log of three. Well, that natural log of three isn't there. So it must have canceled out. In other words, it must have started out as three natural log of three and then became, I'm sorry, three over natural log of three because it had to have canceled out. So again, three to the X over natural log of three times natural log of three, and then those cancel out. So this must have been the antiderivative. Now, again, let me see how, how well they matched things up here. Okay, so here, here it is, right? So a to the x, so that a to the x is like three to the x. And we're gonna have an a to the x over natural log of a, or three to the x over natural log of three. Again, the mindset is, what did they take the derivative of? Okay, and you just gotta make it work. So three to the x over natural log of three. If you wanna write one over natural log of three times three to the x, you are certainly welcome to do that. Don't forget your plus c. Now, I don't need a plus C from this guy and from this guy and say, oh, look, we have two C's because when I combine those together, it's still gonna be a constant. And I haven't found that constant anyway, so it doesn't really matter, okay? Antiderivative, we are undoing derivative. All right, I wanna slip one in that I hadn't originally planned on. This is number 20 from the book. And the problem is, is I have a quotient here and I can't just do antiderivative of the top and bottom. Now, the way I handled this before was I wrote a negative exponent but I didn't have multiple terms. So I need to remind you that the rule for adding fractions is that, you know, when you're at, like say if I have two thirds plus uh, four thirds, I add the numerators and I just keep that common denominator, right? And we, we would normally say six over three, so two. And well, I can split it up backwards the same way. And we've done some of this, but so the idea is that I can put all of these over that X to the fourth separately. So this becomes x to the fourth over x to the fourth minus three x squared over x to the fourth plus five over x to the fourth. And I'm still doing antiderivative. Okay, so I'm just rewriting it into a form that lets me do this. Okay, so if you can simplify things or rearrange things so you can actually do it, then you need to do that. So this becomes the integral of one minus three x to the negative two plus five x to the negative four. And now this is that same rule of x to the n plus one over n plus one. This is, this is us undoing the power rule. So you add one to the exponent and divide by the new exponent. Okay, so this is one x to the zero. I'm gonna add one to the exponent. So this becomes one x to the one over one. Again, I don't need you to write that. If you just say, oh, if that was the derivative was one, then there had to have been an x there. Cool, totally cool with that. Uh, this is going to be minus three. I'm going to add one to the exponent, divide by the new exponent, plus five times. I'm going to add one to the exponent, divide by the new exponent. Don't forget the plus C. This is going to be the thing that's going to get somebody, that plus C. This is done. Uh, this would be F if this was little F. This would be big F. No, no profanity implied there. Uh, and again, I'm gonna go ahead and clean this up. This is just X minus a negative becomes plus three over X plus a negative. So minus uh, five over three X cubed plus C. So that's a, a nicer way to write that. Okay, so that was number 20 from your book, okay. Trying to do a mix of problems. All right. 
hit pause if you need to. This sheet's going away. Whew. All right, one more kind of problem we're going to jam into this video. I feel like we're starting to get long, but but this is this is the last thing. Okay, so what it says is find their particular solution. Now, the idea is this. This guy technically has an infinite number of solutions because C could be an infinite number of values. There are lots and lots of numbers that C could have been for this. And the same is, same is true for, for that little guy. Whoop, sorry, for that little guy also. So the idea here is that if I give you a specific number that we're gonna start with, a specific point, a specific X and Y value, then I'll be able to substitute that in and solve for C. So what I have here is F prime equals S. So in other words, you could say, think of this as DF DS equals negative 12 S cubed. I'm gonna separate the variables. So I'm gonna say little F equals, or you could say Y equals if you prefer, uh, negative 12 S cubed DS. I'm going to do the integral. Oh, sorry, this was DF. Watch your notation, because I will be watching yours. Okay, there it is. Now again, I'm gonna think about this negative 12 like it's out in front, because in other words, I'm just gonna bring it along. I'm gonna ignore it. The integral of DF is F. Okay, the, this was F prime. Okay, so, so the integral of little f prime is little f. If this would have been just little f, then this would be capital F. Okay, that's picky, I know, but just getting used to this. Equals, I'm gonna bring the negative 12 along, the antiderivative of s to the third, I'm gonna add one to the exponent, divide by the new exponent, plus c. Well, I'm gonna rewrite that just because it's gonna be easier to work with negative three. So f of s equals negative three s to the fourth plus c. All right, so they want the particular solution. Right now, this is the general solution. This is the no matter what the constant is solution, right? We don't know what the constant is. Well, this is saying we can figure out the constant. So in place of s, I'm gonna put in three. In place of y or f of s, I'm gonna put in, you guessed it, three. Okay, and then I just need to solve this for c and then I will rewrite. So this is kind of like back in algebra one when you were finding b for the y equals mx plus b, that kind of thing. Same idea, only we're finding c. All right, so this is three equals, well, that's 81. So I believe this is negative 243. I'm gonna add 243 to both sides. So this is 246. So the final answer, I feel like I'm on a game show suddenly, is negative three s to the fourth plus 246. Sorry, I'm running out of room here, but I'm gonna make it work. Okay, so there you go. All right, last one, and then we'll be done. Okay, so the last one starts out with double prime. Well, that if we're trying to find the particular solution, solution of a differential equation is we want it without any derivatives here. So again, we're going to do the same kind of thing. This is uh, F double prime. So F prime, okay, I'm gonna be a little lazy with my notation here, will be the integral. So I'm gonna back it off one derivative by doing antiderivative. The integral of two over X squared dx. Well, I haven't done the integral yet. In fact, I don't even like that format, so I'm going to change that. I know some of you would have done that right away, and it's because you're smarter than me. All right, so integral of this is, I'm going to add one to the exponent, bring the two along, add one to the exponent, divide by the new exponent, don't forget the constant. Okay, so this is f prime now. This is not f of x, I still have a derivative in here. Let me do a little clean up here. So negative two over x, and you might be saying to yourself, why are you doing that? Because we're you know, changing the format because we're just gonna have to do antiderivative again. Well, the thing is, is I need to know this c value for this. And that's what this is for. So I'm gonna put one in for x. I love one. I'm gonna put four in for derivative. So four equals negative two over one plus C. 
Oh, sorry, I'm off screen. I did not know. Okay, so here I am. I substituted uh, the one in that one and that four went in for x and derivative. So this is just negative two. I'm gonna add two to both sides, c equals six. All right, so f prime, I'm just rewriting it, equals negative two over x plus six. Okay, so now I need to do all this again. So I need to do derivative of the left and right sides to back this off from derivative now to the original function. I'm just undoing the derivatives to get back to the original. So this will be f of x, okay, not the derivative of f of x, equals the integral of negative two, so the negative one plus six, and I need a dx on the end, okay? Anytime you have this integral symbol, you need the dx on the end. Now I have multiple terms, so I'm gonna throw some parentheses in there. All right, so here we go. Bring the negative two along, add one to the exponent. So add one, add one, ooh, oh, add one to the exponent. Wait a minute. Isn't that gonna make this x to the zero over zero? Well, how do we do that? Well, we have come to a little special case here. So let's do a little side note. Okay, so I originally had negative two over x which is kind of like one over X. So I need you to think about what do we take the derivative of to get, sorry, I got stuff everywhere. Um, what do we take the derivative of to get one over X? Well, well, so I feel like Ronald Reagan. Um, let me share my screen. And we can go back to our cute little rules and I'm hoping you already know uh, but one over X is the derivative of natural log. Now we do have a little bit of a catch because natural logs domain is only positives. There's this little disclaimer here. Well, it turns out one over X doesn't have that same domain. One, one over X can work for anything. Now, so what they've done is they've adjusted the, the log rule so that you can use it for positives or negatives. It's just the catch is the antiderivative of one over X is the natural log of absolute value of X. Okay, so all that being said, let's come back over here and let me unshare my screen so that you can see this better. Okay, so, so this doesn't work and it's not anything we did wrong. It's just, this is a special case for those power rules, okay? All right, so I'm gonna go back back here, okay? So the antiderivative, I'm gonna bring the negative two along. The antiderivative of one over X is natural log of X with some absolute values. Plus, okay, this is like X to the zero. So I'm gonna add one to the exponent, X to the one over one. I'm not gonna write the over one, plus C. We're almost there, we really are. Okay, so this is now f of x equals, we did the antiderivative twice. We have another ordered pair up here, one, three, x is one, y is three, f of one is three. So I can put the three in here, negative two, natural log of the absolute value of one, plus one plus c, well, three equals, the natural log of one is saying e to what power is one? Well, e to the, remember it logs are exponents. So e to the zero power is one. So this is zero times this is still zero. So I'll write zero plus one plus C. Looks to me like C is two. So now we just need to rewrite the original equation. F of X equals. Now, so again, I need to write all of this with the value of C thrown in there. plus two, and there we go. All right, now I know there's a lot of stuff written there. Feel free to pause obviously and, and make sense out of this. All right, so the, again, the short version is integral is antiderivative and that funky S thing is the notation. We're gonna be throwing plus C's on all the time because when you do antiderivative, you don't know if there was a constant there or not that we took the derivative of, so we need to put it back even if it wasn't there. Um, solving a differential equation, 
just means get rid of the derivatives in the equation. So solving a differential equation just means we typically end up doing antiderivative. Now the proper notation is to separate variables and then do integral of both sides. And we got a little bit loose on the solving of these just because of the notation they started with. Okay. All right. So we will chat more in class. Thanks for being here. Thank you for uh, being here for Sanford Flip Math, the home edition. Bye.